Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I have a video on the Miller Harris female fragrances, some of their best sellers. This has been a video that's been requested quite a few times and Miller Harris had kindly sent me a selection to try out so I'm going to be trying them out with you, giving you my first impressions review. If you're new here then hello and welcome, we're all about perfume. I have hundreds of videos just like this going through whole ranges as well as new releases and over on my blog I have extensive articles as well. And if you're a regular viewer do check to see if you're subscribed and give the video a thumbs up, that really helps me. And down below in the description box I'll link to where you can get Miller Harris um, across UK, Europe, North America, Australia, everywhere where it's available and you can also sign up to my newsletter in the description box as well. So Miller Harris are a British fragrance brand. They are vegan, founded in 2000, so they've been out for quite a while now. Founded by a lady called Lynn Harris and the sort of ethos is about using a lot of natural ingredients. The website describes framing natural botanicals in complex ways. They start with nature, you strive to use natural ingredients, ethically, sustainably sourced, and all their fragrances are Eau de Parfum, which as you guys know is something that I <laughs> care about a lot. Eau de Toilettes do annoy me usually. And they have men's and women's fragrances and unisex ones as well as lots of different like accompanying products as well. So I'm going to start off with their brand new release um, which is called My Rika Muse and it comes in this really nice deep red bottle. And this has just come out in 2022. Little tote bag to go with it, find your muse. And this is um, an interesting fragrance. It's definitely autumn, winter, and I would say more nighttime. It's quite a sexy fragrance. So it has a hint of a strawberry in, but personally, I get a lot of a patchouli rose heart, and then it has a sort of benzoin, vanilla, and a rum base. And I really do get the rum and it feels like something you'd wear on a night out to like a jazz club or it definitely feels sophisticated and elegant but still has those sexy vibes and quite mysterious vibes. And um, it's quite unusual as well. It's not something I've really smelt before. You know, it's not a typical scent. And I have been wearing this and I've found that it's lasted really well as well. It's a good quality eau de parfum. They describe it as a stolen pause enjoyed alone, quite elegant in reflection of the joy to come. Fragrant red fruits of bayberry and strawberry brighten a composition of tender rose and sensual rum. Um, but I don't find it particularly like fruity. If you're not a fan of fruity fragrances, I think this is fine. Don't be put off by them saying about strawberry. For me, it's more that rose patchouli and rum is what I get. So if you're looking something quite different for an evening, um, this could be a nice option, especially as we go into the colder months. So next one I have is called Chizero. I had to check how to pronounce this. You know what I'm like with my pronunciations. I'm awful. Scherzo. Oh, scherzo. 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 There you go. That's what the dictionary is saying. And this one has really unique design on the sort of packaging, really cool packaging. And then there it is. So Scherzo is said to be inspired by 1930s French Riviera. And the brief was given to the perfumer um, just a passage from F. Scott's Fitzgerald book, Tender as the Night. And this is what he came up with. And I think this is, if not their best, but certainly one of their best-selling fragrances. Again, it smells very classy, sophisticated. It has an oud in here. So straight away I can sense that oud and it's quite a smoky oud as well. There are, uh, it's quite a balminess to it. And then there's a sort of feminine rose, vanilla, slightly sweet oud. And I would say that even though this is like a female fragrance, I think this could be worn by anyone, you know, unisex. It's really a, a yeah, I get a smoky charcoal fiery oud. So I can definitely see why this is a bestseller. It's really good for lasting. It really, you know, you only need like one spray and you can really smell it around you. It's classy, interesting. And I think oud fragrances sometimes can be a bit too masculine or heavy. Whereas this, even though it's strong, it has a feminine vibe to it. So I think if you're looking for a feminine oud, this is definitely a good option. So next we have Put Santal. Um, Santal referring to sandalwood and Put is French for skin. And this comes in this really nice sort of dusky pink bottle, very feminine. So again, this has that same balminess 
of the Shizero one. Yeah, olive balm, I really get balmy. It's almost slightly medicinal, clean olive balm. And, and now I'm getting a saffron note coming through with some pink pepper. So again, it feels a bit more oriental, ambery. And now the sandalwood base is starting to come through. So again, I'd say this is like an oriental, woody, but very balmy. They're both quite balmy fragrances. And I think the, the sort of dusky pink makes you think, oh, it's gonna be uh, quite light or, you know, pure sounds very light as well. No, this is a heavy eau de parfum. Yeah, really, really balmy again. Heavy, classy, feminine oriental. Next we have Tea Tonic, which is one of their classic fragrances, and this obviously comes in a transparent bottle. And Tea Tonic is unisex for men and women. So this is totally different to the others we've tried. It's a really fresh, uplifting, lemony scent. So at first you get all this lemon, pettigrain, super refreshing, like something you'd want on a really hot summer's day. And then it starts to reveal some more interesting, unusual notes. So there's a nutmeg and of course that tea leaf note and also a bit of mate, which brings out the greenness of the tea leaf. So it goes from being a sort of classic fresh lemon to something that's a little bit more aromatic, a little bit more slightly spicy, I guess, from the nutmeg, but it's still feeling very unisex and still feeling very clean. I know tea fragrances are, you know, like Elizabeth Arden green tea, known for being quite like cleansing, clean. So I think tea tonic would be the kind of thing you'd spray in the morning, like after a shower, like refreshing. Um, you get that uplifting lemon and then it's followed by all that unusual notes. I can imagine people saying, oh, what are you wearing? That's unusual. I've definitely found all of these fragrances so far from Miller Harris have been quite unique. It's not like a smell that you've smelled a thousand times before. Um, so I can see why that's been, um, again, one of their best sellers. So now I have a bunch of um, samples. Their samples come in these really nice cardboard packages. So the first one is Rose Silence. So this is for sure a classic rose. It's got a bit of an orange and black currant top note. Um, so slightly fruity, but very much classic British rose, hint of patchouli, but sometimes rose and patchouli can be very heavy. It doesn't feel like that. Rose is definitely the star of the show. And that orange especially is really lifting it and stopping it from being musky or powdery. But I'd say if you love the smell of roses, you're a rose person, then this is like a classic rose um, to add to your rose collection. So next we have Secret Gardenia. Um, I do love Gardenia, so I'm excited for this one. Mm. So you won't be surprised to know, gardenia, definitely the main note there. Very fresh and green. I get some ylang ylang, it's quite watery, a bit fresh, aquatic. This is definitely more a summer fragrance. Starting to get a bit of jasmine, there's a hint of violet in as well. I'd say of all of these, this is the most feminine of them all. It's that feminine white floral. Gardenia has like a sparklingness to it, but the jasmine underneath is giving it depth and weight and it's very green. It, it smells a bit like Lily of the Valley, though that's not listed as being one of the notes. Um, but if you like things like Lily of the Valley, it's reminding me of Penhaligon's um, Bluebell. I think, I know that's just been discontinued. So if you like that, Penhaligon's Bluebell, then I think this could be a new alternative for you. So next we have Lumiere Dore, which means golden light in English. Mmm. So this is a very unisex uh, bitter orange scent. It's basically an ode to the bitter orange tree. We've got the bitter orange fruit, we've got pettigrain, we've got bergamot, we've got neroli. It's all of those green lemony notes. And then there's a very clean jasmine and slight amberiness to it. This reminds me of something that would be good for sort of body products, hand wash. It's got that green feeling to it of freshness. Um, and even though it's you know all about those orangey and bitter orange vibes, it still feels quite complex. There's a lot of different notes going on here. Yeah, it's like an ambery bitter orange. You don't usually see bitter orange with amber. They tend to, um, so I think that adds a depth to it, which give, gives it a little bit of masculinity, but I'd say that's definitely still unisex. And I love that name, Golden Light. 
So next we have Coeur de Jardin, which means um, the heart of the garden. So it has a pear top note, but it has a, a real booziness to the pear, like, um, yeah, like it's a liqueur. And so now it's developing very unusual scent, I have to say. I'm getting a bit of tuberose, jasmine, patchouli, but there's a mossiness to it. Uh, there's a lot going on in this one and it's hard to describe. I think it's it would sit in the green fragrance family, hence the name Garden, and it's relatively light, that pear's really lifting it. I think it's aimed at women, though I would say it's relatively unisex because it's not like flowery, it's not sweet, it's like a clean green. Again, if you if you like the Penhaligon's Bluebell that was discontinued, I think you'd like this, so it's a bit more softer. Then lastly, we have Etude Noir, uh, which means black case. So this is a unisex incense leather fragrance, very incense-y, more so than the leather. And you've got uh, lots of amber, it's definitely an amber incense, laburnum, and an iris as well. So lots of heavy notes, very much winter, a bit of vetiver, but overall, an amber, yes, uh, an incense amber scent. Cool, so those are all the ones um, for this video. Um, let me know what your favorite Miller Harris is. Do you have any of their fragrances? What, what are your favorites? Let me know in the comments down below. And let me know if you want any more videos on Miller Harris as well. Obviously, I haven't been able to cover all their range because they have so many. Um, but yeah, that's it, guys. So thanks so much for watching, as always. Down below in the description box is where you can buy Miller Harris fragrances. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.